What's going on people? We are Tottenham TV here. Spurs have lost by three goals to two. Two nil up at half time. Um, we've just absolutely chucked this game away lads. Absolutely chucked it away. I don't know what's happened. It was like, it was unrecognisable that team in the second half and what we saw in the first half. We were so good. We were vibrant. We were causing them trouble time after time. Timo down the left, Brennan down the right, Kulisevsky, uh, Dom Solanke at the heart of things. We were so good. We were vibrant. We were energetic. We were creating chances. We scored two goals and, you know, probably could have scored even more than that in the first half. And then it comes out in the second half. We looked lethargic. We looked lost of ideas. Brighton were the team that looked like they wanted it. Spurs. We were just clueless. We were absolutely clueless in that second half. We could not break them down for love nor money. They scored three goals in the space of 20 minutes. And then after, and when, and when they get 3-2 up, we had no, literally no answers to them whatsoever. Clueless, absolutely clueless. And literally, it was complete, like, if I, if I showed you that first half and that second half in complete isolation, you would not say that's the same team. Nowhere. They were, they were nowhere near it in the second half. Yes, I'm baffled by how poor we were in that second half. I mean, first half, obviously we had so much energy, especially in the middle of the park. I thought, you know, I thought the key, I think, for me is probably the field, because I thought, in the first half, we're really controlling that midfield, making sure that when we were building up, we we're breaking through the lines and then getting in behind them time and time again. Werner and Johnson, I can't even remember how many times they got in behind it, which is so many. And it looked like we could score at every opportunity. We should have, you know, maybe looking back, you know, we should have put that game to bed in the first half, albeit tune it up, you're in a good position. But maybe it probably should have been more and we, we paid for that. But coming into this game, we know Brighton are a very good team. We know they're very good going forward. We've got some brilliant attacking players. And the key was just to make sure that we kept them quiet, make sure that we're not giving Matoma as much uh, encouragement as we were, and uh, make sure that you know we're more physical than them. We have to outbattle them, and we did that brilliantly in the first half. I thought Solanke was getting involved, Decky and Madison. I thought were absolutely fantastic. I thought they were really controlling things. Decky was finding all sorts of space down that right hand side. Uh, he, they just couldn't handle him really. Brennan got him behind, obviously got his goal, brilliant finish after a really good through ball for Solanke. Werner, I mean, he was getting in behind as well, probably could have done better than a few of his opportunities, as per usual. Um, but I thought, you know, first half, looking really strong, as, as much as, you know, Brian did have a few half chances, but I thought, by and large, we contained them. Really well in control, absolutely yeah, well we in control. Yeah, we contained them, we contained them, you know, apart from that Welbeck chance, I can't remember too much they had. And it looks like it was going to be an easy day for us in the end, like we were, it was pretty simple. It was a bit too enough. easy in that first half yeah. of time. I think what we'll set the tone in that first half is as soon as we came out, we were conceded what, within a minute or two minutes. We conceded really sloppy goal. Destiny should, should get it clear. Mintes allowed way too much time in the box to finish that. Then all of a sudden the game just opened up and they were the ones bossing us. The midfield battle was well and truly lost at that point. And uh, Belaber was running rings around us. Mat Matoma all of a sudden was absolutely had horror on toes. I thought the, the doggy was struggling badly in that second half. Yeah. Up against Minter. Minter looked like he had the beating of him every single time uh, on that left hand side. And then Ruta was finding all sorts of space. And I think in the first half where we were restricting them, and yes, they had a, a bit of the ball, but by and large, we were the ones controlling that midfield. All of a sudden, as soon as they got on top of us in midfield, all the gaps were there because we know that we're going to leave gaps. We know how we play. There's no secret that we leave spaces and, and we are open. But I think the goal, obviously, the aim of the game is we'll be very pressing, very intense in our pressing, suffocate the opposition and limit their chances. Um, definitely by far our worst defensive display of the season by a country mile. We completely gave up um, those spaces in, in, in between the lines, which uh, Rutter was able to really uh, make us pay. And I have to say, the defending for, especially for the first and the third goal, was just atrocious. The I third thought even, goal, even the second goal, I thought, I don't know what Romero's doing. I don't know why Romero's not stepping out and being more aggressive and trying to challenge for that ball. I mean, to be honest, I think Romero, Van de Ven and Udogi who, all pretty much look lost at sea in that second half. All of them. Van de Ven struggled badly. That's all of them. Bad. All three of them. I think Poro was probably the only one that kept up his standards in that second half. Even him, Matoma was... Yeah, that's also true. That's also true. So what you're saying is the back four just completely, completely lost their way in that I, second half. I think it's more than the field. I honestly think it's more than the field. I think when you've got players like I think Madison... it was all of them. I think when you've got players like Madison and Decky in there, Obviously, it's brilliant when you have the ball, and when they're when they're you know high energy, and when they're obviously you know got got the energy and, and the fitness to, to dominate, then it's brilliant because we saw how the results in the last few weeks, and I think a lot of us do them. But as soon as they dropped off their energy, as soon as all of a sudden Brighton were the ones getting on top of us, they struggled to deal with it. And I think 
they're not obviously they're not defensively minded are they they're obviously brilliant when they're pressing when we're on the front foot and they're good at covering those kind of spaces but as soon as, as we've always said as soon as you know it's on us to drop a bit and we're under pressure we, we struggle <laughs> and we saw that today as soon as Brian had control we had no answer to that yeah so why, we, why we, we could all see what was happening in front of our eyes we were coming under in pressure pressure increasing pressure increasing pressure we, we just didn't come out with anywhere near the mentality that we need to go and close off that game. So why are we waiting so long to make changes in the game? I didn't understand yeah. that. Like we, we should have made changes on the first goal, second goal, third goal. It still took him another 10 minutes after the third goal to make changes. Like, the problem, why? Is, the why? problem is, the problem is once we're 3-2 down, you don't really want to make changes in a weird way because the, you, you've got Jackie, you've got Madison there. You don't want to really take them off at that point because you yeah, know they're, he, the, they're the ones who are going to be the ones more likely to open them up. So I get I understand, that. Because we have no Odebert, no Richarlison. We have uh, really, we're, 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 we're no son as well. So we're really struggling for forward options I get right that, But now. even the, in the offensive section, we, we completely lost our way. We couldn't break them down for love nor money. We completely lost out of ideas. Yeah. We had no clue how to break them down in that second half, even with all that, that attacking talent on the pitch. In the first half, we were breaking them down like Will, and they, they, they just seemed to just completely run out of energy. It's like they went into the first half and then just came out with no gas left in the tank whatsoever. Yeah. So you need, whether it's an attacking personnel or whatever, you need more legs on the pitch. We had no legs whatsoever. Mm -hmm. Agreed. And we spurs it up. It was spursy from, from us. And it clearly an shows joke. this team still has that capacity to be like that. And that's something that Andrew's going to have to sort out. But we fell apart in that second half. There's absolutely, there's absolutely no uh, way around it. We fell apart. And that's real, was really concerning how, got, bad, how we got, had no answer to what, what was thrown at us from Brighton. You've got to give credit to the way Brighton responded in that second half because they responded unbelievably well. And they, they absolutely. Sh I know they're they a good team. We know they, they're a good team. They walked all over us in the second half. But. I don't think that that kind of, you know, forgives what Spurs showed in that second half. That was I haven't seen anything as dreadful as that for a while from Spurs. I think that was a uh, <laughs> that was worse than Coventry at times in that second half. That really was. Um, second half that was our worst performance of the season by a long way. Worst de defensive display, like you say, and we uh, we just had complete no answers to him. And that's the hard thing to take really. And uh, we just need to dust ourselves off. <laughs> I was saying before the game, uh, if we win this game, it's probably uh, a bad thing that international break is coming, but now it's probably a good thing they could probably do with the break. Maybe, yeah. Um, but it's just so gutting coming into this game, five wins on, in a row, full of confidence. 2-0 up at half time you're thinking happy day things are going swimmingly like you know you can see the confidence flowing through us in that first half and it's just a shock it must be a shock to the system for these players because what happened that second half we, we looked like we were just completely lost we were clueless we, we just lost we ran out of what was going on we didn't know how to react to what Brighton what, how Brighton um, changed in that second half and all of a sudden you know we had no, we were the ones with no answers they were the ones getting behind and we just didn't have the wherewithal to change it and adapt to the situation that's concerning. It just felt like we just lost all composure in that second half and we looked like so, the most composed I've seen us for a while in that first half as well, the way we were controlling it. Lost all composure and it's just really hard to take that loss. It really is because at half time, I felt like they came out and, and pretty much just thought they won the game already. Two up at half time, they can just cruise through it and win the game in the second half. And you can't do that here, not against this Brighton side. Not against no, this Brighton they're side. They're a good team. And they showed that today, what they're, what they're about. When the, when the chips were down, they stepped up. And, when, and also what was really concerning is from, uh, you know, once we go 3-2 down, absolutely. Like when they're sitting back for those last 15 minutes, again, no answer, we just had nothing. We, we, and maybe the players were running on empty, but we were struggling for options to bring on and really change the game because all our best attacking players were already on the pitch. Uh, we didn't really have too many. I mean, obviously, Mikey Moore came and looked right, but didn't have that much time. Um, but we struggled to really. How many, well, how many saves did I think Rebruga made? One save from a doggy at the end. That was it. Like, we really didn't test the keeper. We didn't. Um, we weren't able to create any sort of opportunities. And, you know, Brighton aren't exactly known for their defensive solidity. So the fact that we had no answer in that, even just to create some good quality chances and look like we could get back in it, we never looked like getting back in it in that second half. And that is, that is really concerning. And until, yeah. until these games, uh, until these moments in games stop happening for Tottenham Hotspur, that Spursy tag is always going to be with us. And that's the reality. Spursy today, absolutely. We absolutely were. There's no, absolutely no other description than Spursy today. And now, as much as we were on a good run, it's three losses already, and we're not even, you know, just entering October, already on three losses this season, and that is not good enough, to be honest. As much as I'm delighted.
people would that, even to be obviously a big part, large parts of that I was delighted with what I was seeing. Well, 45 and, minutes of it. Yeah, and, and for large parts, you know, in the last five games, it's been brilliant. But that's a big setback, that loss. Really big setback. So. I just can't get my head around how unrecognisable yeah. it was from the first half to the second half. You could literally have played... 22 different like 11 players in the first half and a complete 11 different players in the second yeah. half and I, I would have told you that that's probably what happened on the pitch today mm -hmm. so frustrating so hard to take we got a long journey home yeah, now two weeks to over it, exactly and West Ham coming next so uh, thanks everyone for joining us today we'll see you soon